Hi, my name is Howard Jones and welcome to this slightly shortened version of my tutorial uh, on how to create depth in your landscapes. Um, the full version can be accessed through my website, so please visit the website if you wish to be a subscriber. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get back to you. So I hope you enjoy this video and uh, hope to see you again of foreground, mid-ground, uh, distance ground, back, you know, furthest of all um, is, is, is that mountain range at the back there. So we've got a nice succession of distances. So before I start the painting, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you would like immediate notification as to uh, when I upload my fresh videos, then please also remember to just click on the bell icon. Hope you enjoy what you're about to see. Starting with the one inch flat, this is a both a flat, it's quite a useful brush actually, you know, in the past I've used um, a, a strict, strictly a, a flat brush for shape making, which, which is mostly synthetic. Um, and then I've used a, a, a wash brush Okay, I'm starting with a bit of cobalt blue here, but in that cobalt blue, I'm putting a tiny bit of that phthalo green. And I mean, be very careful with this phthalo green, okay? Um, there's a color about Scotland, about Scottish water, Scottish skies. It is, uh, it, uh, it carries a little bit of this transparent phthalo green, okay? Um, so it's, it's barely perceivable. I haven't pre-wetted the sky, okay? If, if you try a crisscross brush action for the, over, over the mountain, try that um, because it, 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 by doing crisscross, it means you're ending up with little white pockets of, of white paper in some places, okay? Um, and we can use those because there, are, there is some sort of evidence of snow back there. So I'm picking up a little bit of burnt sienna here. Okay, so it's a little bit of warmth and a little bit of ultramarine blue this time, not cobalt blue. And I'm going to sort of just where I think I want clouds go below them. So imagine this, I penciled it in, I don't know whether you can see it, penciled in some rather large, what will be cloud shapes eventually up here. Okay, a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of this burnt sienna here. See how the burnt sienna darkens it immediately. But don't go mad with the burnt sienna. You don't want a really warm dark. You just want to make the blue slightly darker than it is. So again, I'm thinking of where these bigger overhead clouds are, right over our heads here. And then I'd like to put these, an inference of smaller clouds back here in the distance. The clouds that may be, you know, around the same area as the mountain peaks back there. But that area is too wet. Watch what happens if I if I try to uh, put a shape back there. It just it doesn't really register. It just disappears um, into the uh, wet surface. At the base of this area here, I'll just infer a little a little bit of darkness. Okay. And maybe a little bit of shape. You can go over these trees that are interrupting that um, line. Right, sorry, I'm mixing as I speak here. I've just mixed up a, again a bit more of the um, cobalt and burnt sienna. A little bit of ultramarine it doesn't really. Uh, well, what we were saying earlier about blues, there's there are very few occasions where I, I, I would sort of say, oh, you know, you've got to use cobalt blue for this this up, up here in the sky. You've got or you've got to use um, ultramarine blue up here. You get used to um, the temperature changes that each blue offers. Right, I mentioned those smaller distant. Um, clouds, didn't I? Well, here we go back here. Now they're sticking, you see. Now they're actually working there because it's that little bit drier because we're, we're three minutes on from where we were earlier. 
Okay. So let's leave. I think that's enough. That's good enough for the sky. Not sure whether I like this pale area over here. Um, but I, you know, that could I could have just made a dreadful mistake by uh, going back into an area that was drying off nicely. Then that brush that I just applied was a little bit wet. But we'll I've got a if it, if that does go a little bit odd, um, I've got answers for it later. Okay. Um, would we want to lift out now that we've got a sky with darks and lights, large shapes, small shapes, warm shapes, cool shapes? Um, would we, on top of that, want to lift out uh, something? Well, why not? You know, let, let's put all our skills to use. Let, let's use as many things as we know we can do. So I've just wrung this brush out. I dunked it in the water tub, clean water, and then I rinsed it out quite vigorously. I rinsed it out quite hard with my thumb and forefinger. And that means I've got a thirsty, this might as well be a piece of sponge now. It's a thirsty brush. And I can say, let's just put a little bit of light maybe on top of one or two of these uh, clouds up here. Okay, be gentle with this. You don't, don't um, this is quite a delicate operation. You just sort of, sort of circular movements that I'm using. And each time I've removed something, I'm back in my water tub to clean the brush. Don't keep, don't go from here and sort of think, well, I've, that's a good shape. And then go over there and do another shape because what's happened is you've taken paint from here, still in the brush, only to make a mess over here because it, it should be a clean, thirsty brush. Um, so let's have a look at this mid-ground territory. Now we know that there's a chunk, a dark chunk, um, dark shape here where I'm circling with my brush handle, don't we? That's the darkest, one of the darkest areas. It's the biggest darkest area in, in the mid-ground. It's not the darkest area in the, in the painting. In fact, this is worth a note. Here's a, here's a side note. This bit of land over here to the right, I'm rethinking it already. I think it's too, when it's too big, okay, I still want it coming in at the way, because, you know, I said, you, you've got to establish the fact that it's there. You don't want to hide it like it's an afterthought. Um, but, um, sorry, what, one reason, one thing is it's too big, okay? So I'm going to reduce the height of it here from that to that, just there. Um, and two, um, it's the darkest thing in the photo, if you look at it, if you squint your eyes, if you can't see that, squint your eyes and you'll see what I mean and look at that photo. It's the darkest thing. That's no place for the darkest thing in your composition, okay? Whatever you do, don't make that little, um, that little chunk of land there the darkest thing in your painting. We'll warm it up. We can warm it up, which will tell us that it's close to us, um, but not a dark warm. It'll be a mid-tone warm at best. So let's get a big wash in here. Um, now, I didn't mean, really mean to do that. I actually put some water in there, so I'm sort of pre-wetting that. So there you go. If, for, um, I was, one, one of us was asking, somebody was asking about, uh, do I pre-wet, I think, last week? And mostly I don't. But just to show you, if I were to do it, that would that this is a, an occasion where I would do it. I've got the background in, uh, and I've got a very defined shape. This is the value of making a good pencil drawing. Okay, your shapes stay there for the entire duration of the painting process. If you didn't make your shapes and establish your shapes early, um, you'd be floundering now, thinking, you know, what how. What, what do I do with this paint? What do I do with this wash? So there it is. There's that shape. And I've used uh, a bit of phthalo green and a little bit of cadmium yellow. Very weak. Okay. And I pre-wetted uh, pre it. So I went in with water around the shape as though I had, as though I had paint in the brush. Okay. Now I've gone over my line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull some of that down because later that'll um, work quite nicely as a uh, a bit of a re underlying reflection 
a good vertical brush mark. Don't go off to the right. Don't go off to the left. Whatever you do, just keep. Um, and again, if you're sat down, that's going to be tricky. OK, to, to, to do a good. Uh, the two, two hardest things to do if you're a, a sit down painter, um, that's to do an, a, a, a good vertical and to do a good horizontal. And the reason why is because it calls for body movement, not not just arm and wrist movement. OK, if you can't, if you have um, back issues and you can't stand up to work, I suggest you put your paintings on more of an angle from you up off the surface. So e even an angle, you know, um, maybe what is that about 40, uh, sorry, about 50 degrees, something like that. OK, um, and then push it across your table. So it's almost at, at arm's length away from you. That's that'll make doing horizontals and verticals if you sat down a lot easier. OK, right. OK, um, so I've put in this really sort of pale um, wash, but I'm hoping for, if you're studying your photograph reference, I'm hoping you'll see the, the, the method, the reasoning for, for me putting that color on. Um, the underlying value and color of this landmass here is this sort of color. OK, slightly warmer in the photo, I've got to say, in the photo, that's a slightly more, um, more of an olive, pale olive. But this is purpose, I do this purposely. Um, if I went straight in with an olive green, straight out of the tube, it's a bit like what I was saying about the indigo color earlier. That's it, we think, job done. You know, this is just a, um, a, a, an olive green. And I've got it, look at that, I've got it spot on. It looks like just the same color as the green in my photo. What you haven't taken into account for is that we will need to put further colors into here when we start putting the trees in and things like that. That is going to affect your olive green and make it muddier, even warmer, darker. OK, so you start bright and light to ensure that by the end of your painting, you've still got some clean color. I mentioned those. Um, that ridge of trees. Um, I'm trying not to make them too um, regimented back there and trying to get the scale right. Don't put, uh, I think my pencil marks for some of these trees were too big. So I'm just making adjustments as I put the paint in here. What color was this? This was ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, okay, for, the, for these little tree marks. Let's have a look at our painting. What? What? Uh, sorry, our photograph. What does it actually do? There are clusters. There are groups of trees. Don't regiment them, okay? Don't make them look like a a line of soldiers all stood in rank. So, um, a bit more. Now, what I'm doing here is there's there's other um, landline uh, vegetation, probably gorse bushes and things like that. Um, and bracken maybe, but it's warmer. It's, it's slightly warmer than some of those trees that are in the background. So I've just added a bit more burnt sienna. And watch how I make this shape. Forget the point of the brush, okay? They may be small shapes. They, it may be a small bit of detail, but I'm still avoiding using the point of the brush. I'd rather go belly side and make this shape. You, This brush is like that to the surface. There's no... Well, there's, there's such a minimum amount of angle there, okay? So the only way you can paint that way is by holding your brush in this very specific way. Put it down. If it happens to you, put it down again. Pick it up. Make sure that you can get the brush contact flat to the paper like this. Okay, now I'm going along the distant bank a little bit by the same method, okay? Just, just pulling this flat brush. And I'm... I'm referring to this as working off the belly of the brush, not the point. There are times, obviously, when I use the point of the brush. Imagine if we were putting, well, you saw me do it a little bit on the trees back there. That was more or less the point of the brush. All right, so I'm just zipping across this edge here. Now that I've got that edge for this, I think I'll deal with this shape. Belly of the brush again, I'm picking up something that's already mixed on my palette. It's really a weaker version of what I just put on here. 
So when that dries off, it might look quite dark to you on your screen, but trust me, there's a lot of water in that and give it only five minutes or so, and that will uh, look a lot paler. Um, so I can, um, in my, my fashion, in the way I paint, uh, I mentioned about uh, how I like to keep colors clean in the initial stages, but that's also because I know that I will be looking at um, probably putting another wash in here, probably just water or a very weak, a very weak shadow later. Um, so now then, focal point territory. I must, I, I'm, I've almost allowed this, assigned this to sort of, uh, I've assigned this to an area of my brain where, oh, of course, yeah, we're not going to forget that. We never forget the focal point. But um, I've also got to be aware that uh, I should be pointing it out to you folks. Um, I'm looking at this area here as, a, as my focal point territory. Okay. So where are we? Sky looks okay. I'm fairly happy with that. Um, nothing in the mountain as such yet. Okay. Other than a slight darkening at, at the foothills just behind here. Okay. That was done at the same time as the sky and the clouds. Um, how do we make this look um, interesting? Okay. We've got some good shapes in there at the moment um and I, uh, sorry I'm, I'm i'm playing as i speak here put a little bit of cadmium yellow in the top of this little near area here so it doesn't darken it but it does uh, um, spice it up a little bit sorry so so back to where i was a second ago um you i'm at this stage and i'm saying what is the next move um now let me just show you i'll have to show me show you my palette here i just said i'm picking up some Burnt, uh, burnt sienna okay but before i picked it up and put it in this little square well there was already evidence some residue of what i've been using so far in mostly the blue of the sky in the background so i didn't mind that at all because the last thing i want this to be at this distance is a bright orangey brown red color from the burnt sienna so a little bit of that uh um dulling down from the blue has worked quite nicely so but as i said again earlier um I, I want this almost to be water-like. It's so weak. So let's run through here. Maybe near this nearer edge, partially up the slope here, we'll put this slightly warmer color in. Okay, so what we're doing here is saying, it's really only some upper areas of this slope that, that are being left with the original limey green wash. Um, much the same for this territory here. It's almost a, it's a swipe of the brush, allowing the color to um, hit and miss over the surface. But remember this area here, I like, I quite like it. I like the fact that this area here is quite dark where my, where my index finger is. Um, so I'm picking up the same colors that I was just using, the burnt sienna, okay, and the um, ultramarine blue. Um, and I'm mixing this so that probably the blue has the upper hand ever so slightly. If you're trying to decipher this color exactly, you would probably, I hope, say, seems as though, you know, how it is used a um, bit more of the blue in than the burnt sienna in that mix. So, and I'm also just picking up for good measure, a little bit of the phthalo green. So let's have a look. I don't know whether it's going to work. Honestly, I don't. That, that's the... It's the honest truth until I apply it. I've mixed it and I do a test shot here. Is it is it the right color temperature? Is it the right strength? Um, and if it wasn't, if I thought that was way too dark, you've got to go a bit darker, remember, because it will dry out lighter. But if it was way too dark, I'd be straight in here with a clean tissue and lifting it out. I've got some drifting going on here because maybe I should have let that dry before this went in, but I think that's okay. That's no big issue at all. There's also a little bit of um, delineation to, to this, this line up here. Um, let's finish what I was doing down here in this shape. Um, and I've left a little slither of light there just to make it a little bit more interesting again. So do you think, you know, as, as you look at this with me, folks, do you think that maybe, you know, this area is not 
it's not cohesive to the colors because it's a lot warmer. It's a lot, it's actually a lot of red in here. I haven't used any red. Well, I have in the guise of burnt sienna. The burnt sienna in this sense is my red, okay? Because it has quite a bit of red in it, but it looks very red compared to the greens behind. So why don't we um, just say for this to work now, we've got to bring a little bit of that color down here just to make the whole thing work together. And I'm just again manipulating. These are the subtle nuances of things going on in the distance there. This brush hasn't got much paint in it, but it does allow me to um, add a few further shapes here. Um, I think this is okay. Try to make that slightly less interesting now. Right, okay. Let's get to the mountain in the background. And the mountain, now that it's dry, why, why, why have I left it till now to do the mountain? Because it was too wet, if you remember. Um, we've worked the wet into wet stage and we've created our sort of cloudy area up here overhead, created a couple of distant clouds further back there. Um, but to enable us, we do need a good edge, you see, to this shape back here. Um, and that's that it, that's not going to happen if, if I'd have worked into this any earlier because it would have been too soft. So let's mix up the ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna have been used a lot in this painting. So strength wise, it can't be too dark, remember? Um, although, you know, the photo suggests that it is, the photo can suggest what it likes. <laughs> yeah. what's, what's got to happen is you've got to have your painting balance, uh, in balance. So let's go for the darker, some of the darkest shapes first. I'll make, this is this, the, the beauty of this brush again. It's, it's a, it not only acts as a good wash brush, but it also is a good shape maker. So let's say, we'll come into this side here. We can imagine some ridges up here, but get this line good first. My concern is only about the edge against the sky, the skyline, okay? And I won't, I, this is where I like to work with two brushes. So I just picked up a, a round brush because um, I don't want to come down to as hard an edge as, as it appears in the photo. I'd rather soften that, let it diminish there in a much more subtle fashion, okay? Um, a it seems to be some sort of ridge in this direction. I'm only really guessing this. I can't be sure at this distance, but if I didn't make some effort, um, it would just be a flat shape back there. So all the time just using um, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Now, now if I squeeze the paint out of this brush and just pull some of the pigment over these areas, we can get a suggestion of snow up here. Just a bit, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't have to be as, as much as what's in the photo, or it could be more if you wanted it to. But don't worry about it not looking exactly the same as the photo. Five minutes after, if I'd have taken another photo and, you know, cloud may have come down and obscured this scene, it, you'd have a completely different um, scene. So I'm just making, I'm going to do this a lot quicker now, folks, because um, I can't work this type of thing slowly. It gives me the, it gives me too much time to think about it. And that's a that's fatal for me. It just it just doesn't work for me. Um, have to paint these shapes rapidly and keep them fresh. Okay, in here along there, another shape something like that. Just get that little bit of cobalt blue that's stuck on the paper there from a previous wash. That's okay. Um, take this round brush again now, and I'll land it in here. 
Okay, what do we do this similar? Uh, oh yeah, last week's uh, lighthouse, wasn't it? So it's the same technique, folks. Land the brush here and just tease into the um, pigment that's up here. Might be the opportunity here for another hint of snow, just about there. But land the brush here, tease into that pigment, and you get a nice soft transition of what's going on on the side of the mountain to what's actually going on um, at, at the ground level or near the lower areas. Um, could I, does this need anything more? Will it settle as it is really well? You know, will it look good if I let it settle and do its thing? Um, just checking. Could just warm it up a tad, you know, a little bit um, uh, about here somewhere. There certainly seems to be some warmth on that territory there, as though the sun is actually finding its way onto the mountain slopes, lower, the lower areas anyway. Um, and now um, I'm gonna just, I, I think I'm gonna have to let that dry actually, because I want, I, I will be weighing it up that area in a moment as to whether I need to put just a tiny bit more um, uh, 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 inferred detail in there. So let's try and finish this painting. We're not far off. Um, and I'm gonna put the, um, the water in now. So I'm picking up cobalt blue, more or less, it, when you think about it, it's got to be a reflection of the sky, hasn't it? That's all, that's all water is on, a, on a, a day with even a small amount of light around. The, um, the, the, the water is going to be a reflection. Let's just try some practice shots. This, um, this is, for me, I've got to do this stood up. Um, uh, and the safest place to try this out is somewhere down here. So if you're not comfortable with this, doing this with a, you know, it's, you count your brush strokes. Once you start, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I work from uh, left to right. Um, don't stop midships, don't stop here, don't stop there. Even if the brush has run out of paint, continue the movement right off the edge of the opposite side, okay? So, but I'm gonna start down here because if I don't like it, I can take it off. That's okay, I'll come back the other way. From, from right to left. You don't have to, you can do all left to right, left to right, it, it's, in, it, it's up to you. But um, sometimes you get a slightly different delivery. So the speed and light touch of this means that you get this broken effect, this broken brackish water um, here. But I'm now going to um, put in here uh, a couple of, let me just sort of get that right at the top. So I'm just taking some of the water out of the brush there, continuing up to there, uh, up to the uh, distant um, landline back there. Now then, um, this is another opportunity to just to put the odd vertical in, be very, very delicate here, just to, just, it's, it's almost, it's almost like you're dusting off a delicate piece of, 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 um, of furniture. Um, just dust it downwards like this. And in this foreground now, same brush, same big brush, ultramarine blue again, uh, and burnt sienna. And we have this evidence of just um, seaweed just breaking the surface here. Just about here. Bigger here. Some bigger, bolder, longer marks. That, that's whatever you do. That, that's an area to get um, too engrossed in. They're just a couple of dark horizontal marks with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Right. Let's look at finishing this painting. Um, and I mentioned a moment ago that um, I was wondering whether, you know, parts, particularly here where there's some evidence of snow on the mountain. I was wondering whether we could just lift that a little further. Uh, have to be really careful here. Part of me is sort of saying, don't be a fool, leave it as it is. You know, it looks fine. Um, 
but I've I'm driven constantly by um, the what if, uh, and I've made a, a lot of very bad paintings as a result. But it won't stop me. Um, that's the only way forward, as I see it, it, it is to, just to say it's just water paint and, and paper. Um, don't get precious about it. Try something that will teach you something new all the time in every, every painting. That's the honest truth. I, I am um, in every painting. In fact, I feel quite disappointed sometimes if I've gone through a painting and I thought, well, what did I, what, what did I learn there? Nothing. <laughs> so and it's probably because I didn't take any risks. Probably because I got to the point and I chickened out. I just uh, got a bit precious. So I'm just looking at now I'm in that territory where this can't be taught. This is just will that look good if I if I do this? If, will I if, if I were to infer some little um, subtle ground uh, um, undulations over there, would that look good or will it, or won't it? Not that impressed with it, if I'm honest. So I'm taking it off with the tissue. But it's left enough inference, even having taken it off with the tissue, it looks better. It does look better. Um, were those slightly dark marks up there too dark? I, I think I should just say, right, let's let's this put let's put this one away. This is this is fine. Um easier said than done as I'm mixing up another colour here. So let me just uh can we lift the focal point territory? Of course we can. Um the, I've just picked up the small round brush, and this is a glue-like mix of burnt sienna and ultramarine. Remember we said we thought the uh, we'd make this area here the focal point territory. Right, easy. We take this dark, the darkest mix of all as, you know, yet. It's, it's the darkest mix. Nothing else on this painting so far has been this dark. It's like that glue-like mix um, of... Uh, that, that we use quite regularly and just placing it, making a couple of those little trees, etc., slightly darker, or rather considerably darker, I suppose, uh, than, than the other areas in this painting could come in here. We can, we can come out a little bit from here in the odd place, but remember the further you move away from the, the focal point territory, the, the less of this special dark um, detail you apply, okay? So, and that's, that's more or less it. Now then, this is, this is, Honestly, optional, folks, um, to you at this stage. As this painting stands, it's it's a finished painting. I, I, it's acceptable, okay? I'll put the mount around it just to show you what it looks like before, before I do what I have to do to feel like, you know, I can improve um, on this painting. Let me just get the mount. So there it is as it stands, okay? So quite happy with it. Don't think I've got enough of the um, ultramarine blue in the water. So it's not, there's a little bit of uh, discord there. Okay. So I probably need to put a bit more um, ultramarine blue in the water so that the, uh, it's more cohesive from top to bottom. But the other thing is, I'm just going to put a, a bit of shadow across some of that mid, mid territory. So just clean up that. And I'll pick up some ultramarine blue. As I say, quite weak, but I want this to um, serve as, as something that that will allow me to pull the uh, you know sky color a little bit more into the this territory here. It doesn't have to be a carbon copy or a, sorry, a, a mirror copy of what's going on in the sky. It's just a case of bringing the, the colour as much as anything uh, down into that territory. Okay, leave that like that. Now, with even more water in this mix, I am going to suggest the um, 
little bit of shadow, okay? Now, as I say, if you're at this stage with yours, um, there's nothing wrong with dipping out of doing this bit, but I do like painting light and you can only paint light by painting shadow. So I'm gonna say that that area there's a cloud, the clouds up here are throwing shadow like something like this uh, over here down this slope. Okay, in probably into here to be fair. Um, this is the area that I wanna be clever up with. I don't want to obliterate that, that's for sure. But what I can do is say, well, this area here shadowed out and striations down here maybe and there we are I, I i'm going to leave it like that 